Okay, this is John the Limo Guy, and I'm here, I'm on 9th Avenue, headed south, but I'm turning left onto 46th Street. So we're going to be traveling east on the 46th. This is Midtown Manhattan. This particular block is known as Restaurant Row. And uh, as you're looking up and down the uh, street, you can see why. It's just restaurant after restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. I'm going to show you six different churches uh, here in the Midtown area. And uh, no, I'm not going to be talking about this particular church on the right, which is St. Luke's Lutheran Church. Uh, nothing against it. It's just that the six churches that I'm going to show you are um, for their own, you know, for their own individual reasons, they're really special. Um, so I'm gonna, the video will probably be in two parts because of time, but I'm just gonna keep rolling and um, just talk as I go. So I'm on 46th, I am just crossing 8th Avenue right now. It's a Friday afternoon, uh, traffic is really, really heavy, but um, Crosstown on 46th, uh, I don't think should be too bad. We're in the theater district right now, so you see all the uh, theaters on our left and right. The Marriott, uh, New York, uh, the Marquis Marriott is uh, here on the right. And uh, at this intersection, we will be entering Times Square. Now what I've done is I've tried a new camera mounting technique, and that is to take the camera off of the windshield. I have a suction mount. Um, device and I used that for my last video uh, a tour of Washington Heights and this I'm using because well I can do this I can pick the camera up I can point it I can put it back on the dash it just sits here so it's uh, it's pretty cool I, I can even uh, turn it around and give you a look at me so uh, anyway that's what I'm doing so here we are at the intersection of 46th Street and Broadway. It's West 46th Street. We're going to be crossing uh, through Times Square as soon as the light changes. And when we go through the intersection, I'm just going to pan the camera uh, to the left and to the right just to give you just to give you a shot of this. Now, here at Times Square. I am starting the tour of churches because the very first church that I'm going to talk about is just ahead on the left. It is a church that is amazing. It's the Church of St. Mary the Virgin and it is an Episcopal church but it's part of the Oxford movement. It's an Anglo-Catholic parish. It, um, it basically is an extremely, well, when I was a kid, we used to call it High Church. It was a High Episcopal Church. And of course, here is uh, Times Square. And that's looking to the north. And this, of course, is looking to the south. And you can see, I have to make sure I don't hit anybody, but also I have to go because after all, after all, I have the light. <laughs> that's called chicken. Uh, anyway, I'm going to see if I could really sort of slow down or even pull over as we get close to this church. The church is barely noticeable when you turn the block, when you turn into the block, but its size is, is really tremendous. So I'm going to turn in to this spot here, which is literally right in front of the church. And I'm gonna un undo the window. I'm gonna roll it down and uh, talk about this church for a few minutes. This church is um, is a beautiful church done in the French Gothic style. As you can see, it has an outdoor uh, crucifix, and uh, it has a big rose window. Also, the building to the right and to the left are part of the church complex. This church basically runs the full uh, length of the block from 46th Street, where we are now, to 47th Street. The nave is something uh, like a hundred and... Don't kill me if, I, if I'm not 
uh, if I'm not exact on this, but the nave is like 180 feet long, uh, or 160 feet long, 80 feet high, 60 feet wide, and um, the whole complex includes a parish house, rectory, and um, a uh, um, sort of like a, a, a another uh, residence for nuns. It's it's an amazing place, and the the mass is celebrated in all of its solemnity and splendor here. Um, it's known affectionately to some as Smoky Mary's because of a copious use of incense. The church was designed by the architectural firm of uh, ne Napoleon Lebrun and Sons. It was built uh, around 1894, 1895. It's the first church in the world, according to the AIA guide, to be built around a steel frame. So the steel frame is not visible, but it's it's actually, it went up as a steel frame first and then the um, the church was built uh, you know with the frame with the framing there uh, just sort of like a modern skyscraper would be very much in contrast to another church we we're going to see in this tour which is St. Thomas Church that was originally built in the old style of just um, you know block construction where uh, there is no supporting steel framework although um, they sort of had to add bracing uh, 10 years after the church was built because of a uh, sagging wall. Uh, I think it was the, um, the west wall, which uh, is, is actually, I think, the liturgical east wall. So anyway, uh, one more thing about St. Mary the Virgin here is that the music program is absolutely spectacular. And I'm going to talk about the organs in every single church, uh, in all six churches. The organ is amazing. It was built uh, back in 1894, 95. It was built by uh, the George Jardine Company. But that organ, uh, if anything remains of it, it's just a, a little a little pipe fence in the front of the church. Maybe some ranks re remain. I don't know. But the the amazing organ was built 1932, 33. Um, by the Aeolian Skinner Organ Company. It's a huge church. It's something on the order of... Um, it's something on the order of uh, 97 stops. It's four manuals. And an interesting uh, aspect of this organ, and unfortunately I don't have any pictures to show on this video, but uh, the organ is built without a case. Uh, and I'm going to start moving and talking. The case was proposed. A very nice case was designed by uh, G. Donald Harrison, the uh, president of the Aeolian Skinner Organ Company, but the case was never built. And uh, the organ, even today, remains uh, uh, completely unencased and uh, exposed along the back wall of the church around that great rose window. It's really a, a sight to behold, but even more so is the sound. The sound is absolutely incredible. It has been referred to as the finest French cathedral organ outside of France. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I would go pretty far. It's one of my favorite all-time organs, and uh, no matter what it sounds like in a recording, uh, it must be experienced in person. Okay, wow. <laughs> that was a lot to say about one church, but that's an amazing church. And if you're in New York City, and if you're in the Midtown area, uh, the church is located at 145 West 46th Street, just slightly east of Times Square. Okay, so we're continuing on east, uh, excuse me, on West 46th Street. In fact, I think we are East 46th now because, yes, we are. We just crossed Fifth Avenue. So, Fifth Avenue, by the way, is the divider between East and West in uh, Manhattan. Just so you know, anything, uh, anything uh, to, towards the east is considered an east and then the street number address. So if you were to look for 25 East 57th Street, you would be looking at just east of 5th Avenue uh, on 57th Street. If you were looking at uh, 109 West 57th Street, which happens to be the Steinway showroom, you're looking at... Um, 
west uh, west of west on 57 west of Fifth Avenue, one block. So it's uh, between Sixth Avenue and Seventh Avenue. By the way, Sixth Avenue is also called Avenue of the Americas. I just call it Sixth Avenue because that's what I grew up with, and uh, you know I'm an old dog. Uh, it's hard for me to change. Anyway, we're uh, we just passed Madison Avenue. We are now uh, at Vanderbilt Avenue. And uh, Vanderbilt is a very short avenue, so uh, people who are not familiar with this area of town, some people don't know about it, but um, here it is. And then there's a very short block, and then the next set of traffic lights is Park Avenue. By the way, 46th Street is where it becomes Park Avenue. Anything south of this, uh, which is which is basically on the avenue south of Grand Central Terminal at 42nd Street is known as Park Avenue South and not Park Avenue. I already did a video tunneling your way to 46th Street uh, and if you'd like to see what it's like to drive underneath the streets and then through a few buildings um, with Grand Central Terminal just looming uh, ahead uh, watch that video. Um, it's always fun to drive it uh, and uh, experience it in person. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn left onto Park, which means I will be now traveling north. I will be traveling northbound on Park Avenue. And... And here we go. Park Avenue it has always been known as a very, uh, you know, high... Not, oh, uh, excuse me, not always, okay? Back in the 1860s, believe it or not, the trains from the Grand Central uh, Terminal were running just open to the air up this street. So it was kind of industrial. In fact, the old Steinway factory was located on Park Avenue and 60th Street. Uh, that street uh, right now... Uh, there's actually uh, a church on, on both sides of the street, so... But those, uh, again, that's not, uh, that's not one of the churches that I'm going to be talking about. The next church that I'm talking about, uh, church number two, is coming up in two blocks, basically. We are going to be crossing East 48th next. Unfortunately, the light has turned uh, yellow and now red, so... Um, You'll have to bear with me. Uh, this is going to be a contiguous segment, so I'm not I'm not going to stop the camera uh, for that. But um, I'll start to talk about the next church. The next church is St. Bartholomew's Church. Again, it's an Episcopal church. This church was designed by uh, Bertram Goodhue. I think that also Ralph Adams Cram had... Uh, had uh, you know had uh, was part of the design. The firm is known as Cram Goodhue and Ferguson, I believe. Um, tremendous architects uh, and uh, just uh, masters of sort of the collegiate Gothic style. In fact, Goodhue designed a lot of the buildings at Yale, uh, and he was from Connecticut himself. He was born in uh, Pomfret, Connecticut, which is sort of way up in the in the woods. Um, in the uh, northeast corner of Connecticut, which is referred to as the Quiet Corner. The big um, sort of 1930s Art Deco style building here on the right is the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And the hotel, of course, is located, uh, it takes up the full city block uh, from East 49th to 50th Streets, from Park Avenue to Lexington. So there it is, the full... Um, the full block. I'm going to see if I can get into the uh, right lane here so I don't have traffic blocking me. And St. Bart's, it's referred to as St. Bart's uh, affectionately by uh, many people. St. Bart's Church is right here. Now, this church, although is, it's not a collegiate Gothic style, as you can see, it's sort of a Byzantine style. It has a, it has a crossing and a dome. Uh, drum in a dome, I guess you'd call it, although it's not really that round. But um, it's a big church, and uh, if you notice the portico, somehow doesn't look like it fits right. And that's because that portico, uh, stone portico, of course, was uh, taken from the earlier church and uh, moved 
to the location here and uh, this new church here, which was built, I believe, around 1918. A couple of other things about this church uh, regarding the organ. It is also an Aeolian Skinner organ. Uh, I think it started out life as an EM Skinner organ or Skinner Organ Company organ, and then it was added to. The latest editions were done in 1971, so it was actually one of the last instruments that uh, the Aeolian Skinner Organ Company uh, built or re redid, rebuilt. Uh, the Aeolian Skinner, Skinner Company went out of business in 1971. Unfortunately, it was a great, great company, but uh, unfortunately there were a lot of problems. And, uh, you know, the thing is, the, a lot of old timers who knew how to do stuff died off. And uh, their consoles and their pitman chests were just so complex and so uh, labor intensive to build. It just became... The company always enjoyed a great reputation, but tastes started to change a bit. Uh, and now I'm sort of skirting into um, organ, uh, organ, organ folk language. Um, Neo Baroque trackers were were becoming uh, increasingly popular at that time. The tracker revival was pretty much at its at its height at that time. Uh, big electro-pneumatic organs of a uh, hundred stops, which is what Alien Skinner uh, excelled at doing. Um, you know, it, it, it was just prohibitive, at least in, in 71. The, remember, the economy wasn't doing too well then. So to spend upwards of, say, uh, well, in today's funds, over a million, I'd say maybe two million or so for a pipe organ, even a church like St. Bart's, they weren't, uh, well, they did do it. But uh, they, were, they were literally um, the few that could. Now, this is a church here on the corner here, on the far corner. It looks like sort of a granite, um, I don't know, a granite block, granite miter or something like that. And as, as you can see, if I'm tilting the camera right, it's at the base of a large office tower. The office tower is known as the Citicorp uh, building, or at least it was built as the Citicorp building back in the mid-70s. This church dates from about 1977. The church, I know it's, it's probably impossible to see from this.